Wow. Can we appreciate our worship team? Let's give a big shout to them. From all our different campuses, we love you guys. Like, I wish we could be doing worship night with you. Like, all of you. Like, every month, we just fly all of you here and we just do worship nights. <laughs> This is so good, so, so good. Can I, can I detain you for a bit? Are you guys comfortable being my deacons? Yeah, yeah, be my, be my deacons a bit, guys. Just relax, you can even sit on stage if you feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You belong on the altar. So I wanted us to just take a few minutes. And so let me tell you what we're gonna do this afternoon. Um, are you getting distracted by my deacons? What I want to do this afternoon, I want us to just, uh, we're going to t uh, do a bit of prayer, uh, led by some of the amazing ladies of Abuno Church. Uh, this has been just that, just a continuation of that experience that we've been having. But we're going to have some time of impartation as well. We're going to share communion, and we're going to understand why we're sharing communion. And so we're going to actually have a time of uh, prayer and communion, and then we're going to have a time of impartation. But before we do, I'd like you to do me a favor and just turn to your neighbor very briefly and just share with them one thing that has really been your takeout from this gathering. The one thing where you're like, God has really spoken into this part for me. So just share with your neighbor. What's like one revelation, one miracle, one understanding, something that has shifted for you because of this gathering? our attention back so some of you have experienced you've had God teach you something some of you have actually had a miraculous experience with the Holy Spirit while we're here some of you have seen some healing or something like that so what I want to do before we do our prayer time is to give glory to Jesus through a few testimonies these are not testimonies from January they're testimonies from the last two days three days we've been here uh, something that God has, a miracle that has happened while you've been here. Something that shifted for you. Something that, something that just turned for you. Um, so if the people, my, my, my mic people can actually help me out here. I saw your hand up, Pastor Irene. Uh, I've got a hand there. I've got a hand over here as well. I've got a hand over there. My mic people, where are my mic people? Oh, there you go. So Pastor Irene, are you alone? Do you need help? I think she needs help. Who are the people who are helping her? Huh? Pastor, are, you help, are you taking the mic to talk or to help her? Okay, all right. Yeah, let's, let's give her a few helpers, yes. There's a hand over there. There's a gentleman right over there. There's somebody over there, okay. There's someone right over here. And don't keep my microphone, re return it. All right, let's, uh, let's start with those ones. Um, oh, yeah, there's that gentleman, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you for the help and gents. All right, we're going to start with Pastor Irene, something that God has done. Come on, let's appreciate Pastor Irene. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, tell us your name and then you share your testimony. <laughs> Hi, guys. So for me, yesterday, when we fast in Mavuno Diani, we always give to the poor, always. That's the standard. So apart from staying, abstaining from food, giving to the poor is one thing. But what touched me is when we were here and uh, the, the Holy Spirit asked me to speak to Pastor Chris regarding his disciple about some school fees. And I didn't even know if he had kids or anything. So I asked him to call him. That was after church. So I said, uh, call him and uh, let me speak to him if he has any school fees needs. So I asked him and he said he has a daughter in Form 1 and a grandchild who's just starting school. And uh, so for those who know, I have not been working since November. I'm just surviving with my savings. And I, I told him, I'm going to pay for your school fees, for your daughter's school fees. And I had a figure in my head. So, 
Immediately I said that we exchanged numbers and I, I told my sister tomorrow uh, or next week I'm going to pay some money to, in case something doesn't work out, you'll have to bail me out. Then uh, when I got home, I got a message from one of my uh, taxi driver in Diani and he asked me, is your car on sale somebody, is your car on rent somebody likes it and I'd like to rent it out for 12 days. I'm like, what? Wow. How much? 3,000 per day. Wow. So I just made money. While you're here oh. worshiping God. Yeah. Imagine. The school fees so, was paid. Pastor Chris can confirm that because that's just happened yesterday evening. Praise God. Yeah. Wow. Somebody made a pledge to pay someone's school fees. And no sooner had the day ended that the Lord had paid it. And you made that pledge by faith. So bless the Lord. Someone else shared with me a testimony about school fees. Uh, somebody else. No, not school fees. Rent. They paid for someone's rent. Who was it who was sharing with me today? Uh, Pastor Mishu. Pastor Mishu, do you have a mic with you? Just, just borrow that mic near you and share because that was the same testimony. Yesterday we, had, yesterday we had some powerful things. People gave away money. People gave away money in this church. And rent was paid for people who didn't have rent. Pastor Mishu, just share what happened for you. Yeah, so yesterday as you, you said what God was putting on your heart to pay rent for people. So someone asked for rent and uh, I felt my heart uh, with my wife that we should pay uh, for that rent. So right when we finished, we sent him the money. Uh, Lynn, Lynn is somewhere there. She just say, you cannot pay this by yourself. We have to share this. So we shared that and then we paid uh, that, that, that rent. So in the evening, I, when I was going home, I saw a missed call. Uh, I didn't call back a second missed call. So when I got home, I called, and I was asked, uh, please, will you confirm your M-Pesa? <laughs> I said, I don't have an M-Pesa, but my wife has an M-Pesa line. So I shared the number, and we had given 15,000, of which I actually gave eight, because Lynn gave seven. So I, I had to give seven to someone else. I said, I had promised to give 15. Let me actually give that someone else the seven. Wow. So we actually give the 15. Wow. So when I get home, the pastor has sent me a number, send them person number, and boom, 15,000 was repaid. <laughs> Apodidomai. Apodidomai. <laughs> Reimbursement. <laughs> All right. I think uh, the next person was Pastor Noel over here, and then we'll go to the gentleman over here. Good afternoon, Mabuno Church. Good afternoon. Okay. Um, so my uh, miracle happened this morning. Um, when we were here for prayers, um, Pastor Nyambura was praying um, during the Thanksgiving session and she just threw in another caveat there about healing, whoever is trusting God for healing. And so I said, ah, my neck has been aching for the past two days. I have been a stiff-necked person. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so... That must, we know where that came from. <laughs> so immediately the pain just left. I was just wow. I was, I was good. So I just Praise Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brother. Hello. Hello. My name is Ta. My name is Bosita. I'm from Mavuno Kitale. Come on. Thank you. Um, I'm 25 years old. Uh, and for the, the last 25 years, yesterday, it was the longest day. I've never said a prayer in the past 25 years for more than five, five minutes. Now I can pray for hours. Hey. <laughs> Come on. I just I, I thank God for that. I can pray. I can just speak out. I can Praise just God. speak what Praise I God. want. Praise That's God. my testimony. Praise God. What a, what a testimony. Praise God. That's why we pray together. Yeah, that's why we pray together. This is how you come from five minutes to hours in one day. Bless the Lord. All right, we had somebody here. I'm, I'll start with the ones with the I'm only the, the ones with the mics. Don't, yeah, then we'll go around to the next ones before you give the mic out. Uh huh. Good afternoon, Mavuno. Good afternoon. Yeah, my. Just my point, name is point the mic Naomi. to your mouth. Yeah, like that, yeah. My name is Pastor Naomi. Um, my testimony is, for starters, the Holy Spirit is so rich in this house. 
It is beautiful. It is so, so beautiful. And yesterday in the afternoon, we went to a school, a college, and 40 students signed up for Mizizi. And what? Yeah. What? You left here, you went to a school, and 40 students signed up for Mizizi. Ish. Some people hear the word and they immediate practice. Bless the Lord. 40 mina servant. <laughs> Not 10 mina. <laughs> Amen. All right. Was there someone here? Yeah, go ahead. Hi, Mavuno. Hi. All right. So, uh, Pastor Sachuma, uh, Zambia. Come on. All right, so my testimony, basically, uh, it's all about uh, honor. Um, I'm one of the most weird person that uh, you'd ever meet. And if I commit to something, I really, um, it's serious commitment. I joked with some of you that have interacted with me. Um, I've been able to, you know, uh, love one person, actually, I'm single, not available, because I'm, uh, I engaged someone and we've been together for seven years. Wow. Uh, so committed to one person. So the same way, I think it's a gift God has given me. Um, I've learned to honor and to follow, you know, the leaders God has blessed me each season of my life. Um, I had the privilege to serve um, uh, with Pastor James when he was leading Mavuno uh, Lusaka. Come on. I learned a lot, and I'm still here. Uh, Pastor Rocky, um, love you all. I, I love all of you. Pastor Kevin Kilonzi. Come on, come on. Um, when he was still doing discovery, uh, I've served under him. Um, Pastor Timoth, most of the people are here. And I uh, just want to say I love you guys. I am because of the bold step you took, you know, to serve God and that you are still standing. Um, you know, keep standing, uh, keep encouraging us. So through saving... And through honoring all these leaders, um, I think God opened a door for me in two, uh, 2021. Um, I can clearly open to say uh, through Pastor Rocky uh, is in the house, through following, I think he put me on a flight uh, to come here for the Fearless 2021. Uh, I've served, I've followed hard, and uh, I would love to thank God also and appreciate uh, Pastor James as well. Uh, he had to pull out whatever strings that he had to pull out. Uh, he made it possible for me to fly here. Yeah, but all I can say is there's grace in this house. Uh, I used to admire a lot uh, when these guys were flying and Pastor Emma as well because the family in Zambia, you know, follows online. And I can assure you, um, I think last year, last year I was like on um, uh, eight flights. Wow. And uh, some of you have visited your countries and your campuses. Uh, I, can, uh, I can, you know, um, testify that it was God that provided. I didn't use, you know, any penny from my pocket to be on those flights and to be with you guys in your countries. Amen. Um, so there's this international grace in the family. Uh, follow hard. Don't give up and see what God can do. And uh, yeah, I am here. Thank you. Amen. Amen. International grace. Global impact. All right. We're going to keep swing again. Okay. In shades. Yeah. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm Peter Ogada from Kitale Mavuno. Mavuno Kitale, the famous church. No, I'm sorry. Migori. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> I think Kitale is taking over. <laughs> I was in Kitale as from 20, 2015 to, 20, to 2018. So That's fine. Now you're in Migori. That Mabuno is Migori. my home in another way. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Pastor Osudayangu is uh, quite different, but Nakwamba too, Uniruzu too, Niseme. Sema kwa ufupi tu. Yes. You want to say it in Swahili or in English? Both. I will be mixing them because I can't express Who, express who has my, a microphone to translate when he does that? <laughs> yes. Pastor... Uh, Pastor who? Huh? Pastor Moas. Pastor Moas, is he here? <laughs> Papa Mills. Mm -hmm. All right, Papa Moas. 
All right. Anything he says in, in Swahili, you will translate it into English. All right. Go ahead. You have, you have an interpreter. Pastor, when he came to Nairobi, when he came to Nairobi, for the gathering, uh, I've been having a very big luggage on my back, but I don't want to ba go back with it to Migori because I came to gathering for, for so, so that uh, God can help me. Since uh, 2014, after my KCSC, I've not collected my certificate because of PRSS, but I don't want to go deeply into that. It's a, a sad, long story. After that, uh, my case is here, I did a business in my high school. After that, uh, I wanted to apply it outside there. So uh, I started uh, supplying lines of Safaricom. Uh, thereafter... And uh, I hope you're going to come to the part where God did something for you in this gathering. <laughs> yes, I'm coming there. Okay. Uh, there That's the one that I want you to get to. Thereafter... Uh, uh, Gangsters approached me, and uh, I was cut. I have so many wounded wow. here in my body, wow. and the, the main one is here in my hand. Uh, I, I saw that uh, 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 that our village is not a good place. He moved, and for, you went to Kitale for another business where I started kuosa mangu ya mtumba. So he started selling secondhand clothes. There, I did that business for three. Four years in Kitale Line Moja. In a place but, uh, called Kitale Line Moja. My last time in Kitale, November 20, uh, uh, 2018, uh, for Christmas ceremony. So, so he decided to go back uh, for Christmas celebrations? There, I collected some good clothes where, which I was uh, selling there for my parents as a gift. So he went on the 22nd. And when it got to uh, Kitale, I got a call from Kitale saying, Peter, you know what? your stock is no longer there, it has gone. Now I was like, So your clothes were stolen, the clothes that you were selling? Uh, I have nothing again in my life. So I decided not to go back to Kitale again. I started uh, uh, another business in our area, which is uh, a cyber. I, I, I managed to buy two laptops and other things so that I decided to start uh, uh, that business. Thereafter, after one week, those things, they come and take them again all. Wow. Which I used to go with home every evening. Now, uh, I've been typing and uh, giving offering to God. I've been, being, doing, I've been, I've been doing good to, to, to other friends, to my parents, and finally to God. But I've not been expressing, uh, expressing uh, any good thing in my life. Yeah. Every now and then, it's, it's like uh, I'm just... Nothing uh, I'm finally getting in my life. So, Nataka tu niombe. Okay. Says he needs some prayers. Nataka tu niombe. Na vile nilifika huko, I saw the theme there, uh, First Corinthians uh, 15. So when I got 19, here, I saw the theme verse. It really touches me. That's why I decided to give you the gift I, I gave you in the morning, so that you really pay for me, so that I, I, be, I can be set free. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Bless the Lord for you. Amen. My prayer is that God is going to change your story. Yeah? God is going to change your story. And we're going to have a time to pray. So we will pray. All right. Uh, let's come here. So I'm going to just ask you, just for the sake, be sensitive because other people want to share. Just make it as brief and as to the point as possible. And just share it and then allow, just so that we can allow a few more people because otherwise... Uh, you'll take all the time. So let's go. Uh, there's a lady at the back. Oh, do you want, okay, let's go with you first, and then we'll go to the lady at the back. All right. Oh, you don't have a mic. Oh, I need the people with mics. None of you have mics. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. It's gone. Uh, there's some people who've been holding microphones. Okay. Share. You, you've got a microphone. Let me get the people who already have microphones, because I don't want to. Okay. Right. There's one over here. So please share. All right. Then I'll come to, Yeah. 
Don't take a microphone from somebody who has it. <laughs> uh, praise God. Um, I had written to Pastor Godwin, so since all of us are pastors, let me just read the testimony to you. And I am from the bloodline of Jesus Christ, mostly not from my family. Um, testimony. Today, that was the day before yesterday. Today, God broke something in me. You remember I told you the social media first, God wanted to kill my need for validation and seeking love outside God. During fast period, God brought a painful memory. When I was living with my dad, he used to bring concubines. They would leave uh, when they find dad coming with another in the evening. There is this one who stayed despite others being brought, and she wanted me to clean after her, and like the rest who helped around, I refused to clean after her. She got mad and left. Dad got so pissed, he called mom when I was there and said, Nika shiro haezi kana mtumingine ispokuwa wewe, akuja akaina wewe. So that means this child cannot live with anyone else apart from you. So those words made me feel unworthy to be loved and chosen. After Apmo preached, after Apmo's preaching, my need to be fully chosen and perfectly loved outside God has died. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Bless the Lord. All right. Come, come, let me, let's come here, then we'll come to purity after that. Hi. Hi. You all can see me. Yes, we can. <laughs> My name is Mili Alali. I'm from the amazing campus, Mashariki, led by Pastor Milton. <laughs> and an amazing man of God who my family loves so much, Pastor Drew Kemboi of Don Home come Campus. On, on. That's my family. So my testimony is about peace. Yesterday, as Pastor M, you were preaching about honoring our parents. The moment I think you gave us that title and then you made the first statement, my mom called. Wow. So I looked at the phone call, I stepped out and I was with, with Yemi and Rose and, and his wife and I said, this phone call, I don't know, but I just feel something is off. But I, then I picked, she's like, Sasa, when she, she calls me with a soprano, the soft voice, I know her past, something is going to come up. So she says, hi, hi, are you at work? I said, no, I'm at church. You're not at work? I told her, no, I took leave from work. So I'm attending a church thing this whole week. She said, ah, okay. So now I've gotten a terrible, she got auctioneers yesterday. So she called me, she told me she needs money by, by Friday or else she's going to be auctioned. The one thing that I thank God is for once in my life when my mom asked me for money, I did not panic. I didn't panic. I didn't, it didn't even bother me. In fact, I told her, just that, is there anything else? She told me, no, that's it. I told her, okay, fine, we'll talk on Monday. So on my way home, I texted uh, uh, an amazing, handsome man who calls me babe. <laughs> I texted my husband and told him, by the way, mom has said A, B, C, D. So he asked, so what do you think we should do? I told him, we had set some funds aside to sort the kids' insurance because our medical cover was up. I told him, you know what? That fund that we had set for, for, for the kids' insurance, that's what we'll use to sort mom out. And then he said, ah, okay. And then the kids, I told him, you know what? This, this maybe that's the reason why I have this peace. Because in normal circumstances, Percy, I would have panicked. I would have cried. I would have started wondering what's next but for once in my life my mom told me she has a problem with finances and it did not bother me and up to now i'm not even bothered yeah. praise jesus god of peace may the lord bless you greatly as you honor your mom that's a conviction from the holy spirit follow it and may the lord repay you many times may you live long in the life the land the lord is giving to you amen amen uh, purity, yeah, your hand's still up, yeah. Hi, Mavuno. Hello, Mavuno. Hi. Um, so when I came here for the, the gathering, I was very discouraged. Um, before, 
just when I came here, you know, I'm a choleric and I'm also a sanguine. So the sanguine is very indisciplined, but the choleric has really worked hard to tame the sanguine. So I'm very driven by action and doing all those things. So I'm feeling as if I had failed God for some reason, and now, well, for a reason which I cannot share, just in case somebody is stumbled in this church and they say because of purity, so I will not share the reason. So I was feeling very bad, and I was like, God, I failed you. I don't think it's the right thing. So on Wednesday when we came, because uh, I was planning to go to the prayer circle, but then I found that the place was closed. So I sat outside there, and I said, I'll finally have this conversation with God. So I told him, God, this is how I feel, because I'd been running away for two weeks. I sat down, and I told him, God, I feel like this, like this, like this. And then um, a word was dropped in my heart, which was, First John 5, the one for perfect love drives out fear. I've wondered what that meant. So I said, okay. I even came and I told my friend that this is the word I've received, but I have no idea what it means. And then Akmo comes, and then he shares that word. And then he says exactly what it meant, that it means that the love you have for God means nothing compared to the love that he has for you. And so it doesn't matter what I do or don't do, God still loves me. And that spirit of discouragement left. Amen. So when I'm going back, I feel so excited. And I hope I don't forget that it's not my doing that causes God to love me, but God loves me despite of Amen. what I do to God. What? My prayer that many, many people receive that affirmation. Because many of us are so action-oriented. It's very easy to think God is impressed with your action. There's nothing you could ever do to make God love you more. Yani, God brought a whole apostle from Kampala to, to preach to you and affirm the word he had given you. What manner of love is that? That's insane. That's crazy. Pastor Chris, the famous. Praise God. Praise God again. Amen. My name is Chris Twice, um, and I'm honored to serve in Kitale. Um, I am a son of this house, and I'm, um, and I'm my father's son, Pastor James. And you love I him. love Pastor James, and he knows it, and he knows it. I love <laughs> you so much. And uh, I'd like to thank you, Papa Kilo, for also giving me the opportunity to serve in Kitale. Um, so to yesterday, you said, and you will come to testify yeah. tomorrow. I was talking to uh, Lynette and Jane from, uh, from Life We Later, and I was like, man, Manzesi, you, I, uh, it's going to sound like me. I was seated here. And those lights were disturbing me. And I was feeling that campaign you were doing like this. It was disturbing me. Wow. And Pastor Oneno was seated here and I was with Urban. Urban had gone with to, to Your mic is cutting, huh? We need to hear this testimony. I've gone to Equity Alpha. Sorry, in Kitale, and I asked them if they have an optica um, um, nini, space, and they told me yes, and I was to go back and, and do that. But yesterday, immediately after you said it, and I told Pastor Onen, I was like, that's me. I was, I was feeling some type of way, and I wanted to come to the stage. I was like, that's me. Like, it just went. I am not lying. Wow. Wow. Bless the Lord. And, and you said, and you will come to testify. So I was talking to, to, uh, to uh, Lynette, and, and I was like, man, I'm going to take that mic. And, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was. But you said so you're going to come and testify, and I'm here to say that, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to equity. I have here to do what? Hey, sh- Those lights, I'm looking directly at them, man. Wow. It was, it was, it's something that has been affecting me even when I'm driving. It's, it's, in, in a, it's really, it's, been, it's wow. been affecting me. Wow. It's been affecting me. Praise God. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Yeah. I, I just sense today we're going to pray for people with just eye problems. I just feel like there's been grace in the house for healing. I know my sweetheart here has been having some eye problems during the gathering. So we're going to trust God for, for healing. Just for people who have had, had eye problems. Because some, we've had so many testimonies that God is already doing something in that area. So bless the Lord. All right. And then uh, if you're holding a mic... Are there mics in this section? No, those are secondary mics. The ones who got the mics initially. You have a mic over there? There's a mic there. There's no mic. Where is there a mic? Oh, they stabbed you guys. You're not given a mic. Somebody, how can someone not give Pastor Grace a mic? Seriously. Seriously. 
She, there's no mic near her. Okay. Pastor Grace, there's, what haven't you done? Why are you not being given a microphone? Okay, let's hear Pastor Grace. Come on, let's appreciate Pastor Grace. Just, just turn it on. I think they, yeah. So yesterday, when you called out the last, just before you left stage, you said, there's somebody, uh, your right foot, when you step down, it always pains. And I was like, oh God, because I, I, I was sick in bed. And um, I was following the gathering. And... Um, so I remember after, like three months back, I had a real accident. I fell from somewhere on top oh, wow. and fell all the way down. And that leg has just been paining. Seen doctors, done everything, left with scratches, but with a leg that pains. I was like, that's me. And then, but I was like, God, the issue that I'm in bed today, you, you haven't, Pastor needs to call it out. So you say there's somebody, they have a band of pain on their forehead and it is really, really disturbing them, and the Lord is saying it's gone. Immediately, wow. the doctor had sent me to do CT scans. Um, the previous day, I was with the doctor again, and the doctor was saying, now, if this, this breathing issue of yours doesn't clear, we are actually going into surgery. But I knew that moment that when Pastor M walked down the stage, it was me. It was the leg. God was calling me out from the house in bed having been hospital in the morning I don't I didn't even believe it I came in the morning and I'm like Pastor M you're not saying te we say testimonies testimonies to continue from yesterday wow. and I've told Pastor Zedi I've told Papa Vic I know I am healed praise God because it was me praise God wow wow hey sh maybe we shouldn't let pastors testify people might think I've paid them you know those guys who pay people for testimonies? <laughs> no. Praise the Lord. Amen. I was just... Uh, uh -huh. I, I wondered when you would talk, my uh, dear. Nataka, jeans vile dada amesema, ata mimi nae ndiyo nika kumbuka saizi. Sasa ndiyo, I am just testing my leg kama imepona vizuri. You know, it has a wound kwa magoti. Sasa, um, I have been suffering from chronic osteomolitis. And in wow. gatherings like this one, she cannot, she cannot sit for three or four days and still be well. There'll be a lot of pain from sitting long. But today I'm walking and I'm healed in Jesus' name. Wow. <laughs> Bless you so much, Paris. Bless the Lord for you so much. Wow. <laughs> you know, I think one of the things I sense now why God wanted me to hear some testimonies, because I think he wants us to have faith that he's a healer. Because sometimes when you hear things happening, you're not sure what's going on. But I think God wanted you to hear that God is able to heal you. God is able to come through for you. And maybe there's some things where you've been feeling, I'm not healed, there's a difficulty I'm in. I believe God wanted you to hear those testimonies. Just want you, you understand, God is at work in this place. The Holy Spirit is here. And He's here for you. And He loves you. And He's able, more than able, to heal, to bless, to restore. What we're going to do... We'll see if we have time a bit later. Uh, okay, one more at the back, Pastor Song. Okay, Pastor Song. I said I don't want pastors anyway. So go ahead. Yeah, all of you are pastors in the house anyway. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. So my name is Sombo, uh, Zambian by birth, Kenyan by choice. Come on. Uh, I serve at Mavuna Church Loving and uh, under Pastor Kuria and Abjo. Come so on. my testimony, um, God takes care of your business as you're taking care of his. We were here at the gathering, worshiping, praising the Lord. We get home and my nanny tells me that while my son was playing outside in the afternoon, um, someone threw a heeled shoe from the 11th floor and it dropped right beside my son. Like it was like a few inches away from him. Now, 
a heel true from the 11th floor could have caused sure. a lot of damage to him. Wow. But it just like inches away from him and everyone marveled and they're like, wow, this young boy must pray. And for me, it was just a sign that God protects our children and he's taking care of them so we don't have to worry. Amen. So, Amen. While you're taking care of God's business, he's taking care of yours. Amen. Yeah, even while you're here, God is taking care of your business right now. Yeah, there are things that he's working for you. As you're working for him, he's working for you. And this is the kind of God we serve. He's a debtor to no man. I want, I want us to actually have a time of prayer. After the prayer, they do the one more. Okay, so I've just got a word from the sign, cosine lady. She tells us that when we follow the prayer, we'll get to the testimony. <laughs> I think that's a wise woman in the house. Yeah, are you understanding? Hey, some of you are still not understanding after all these years out of school. Uh, let, 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 let me just allow, because it would be unfair if I allow one and then I don't allow the rest, yeah? So just allow me to allow, um, invite a very special, very, very special person. Um, an amazing, do, do you want a minute, babe? Sweetie, are you okay? You ready? All right. Uh, please uh, just help me appreciate this amazing woman of God, Pastor Carol. She's going to lead us in prayer. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Pastor Carol is in the house. So I, we had asked her to actually just lead us in some prayers. And some of you have really benefited by being led in prayer by Pastor Carol. God has given her some understanding. And by the way, let me just tell you this to my sh shame I think she got there long before me and began to understand certain things and I used to find her prayers spooky <laughs> like I used to call her go ghost pastor because her prayers were always about like but you know I've come to understand with time as God has given me deeper spiritual understanding that there are some insights he's given her into prayer that are extremely important for Mavuno how many people were, were blessed when Pastor Carol led us in January in prayers yeah it was a powerful, powerful time of family prayers. I want you to just lead us in prayer with some of the, the, the ladies that you serve with and prepare us for covenant with God. Because I believe as we engage in covenant with God, there are certain benefits that come as we do that. Okay. Thank you so much. Please, please take your seat. I thank God the worship team is behind. I really appreciate. I thank God for you guys. You led us so powerfully earlier on so if the when the spirit moves and you feel you want to break out into a song please go ahead and do that we'll appreciate so this year's um, theme verse is uh, first corinthians 15 58 we have said it um, and we have memorized it but i'm hoping that we have internalized it if the media team can begin putting the slides that will be great but I'm hoping we have internalized it. Internalizing meaning that you have, you have put yourself in that verse. So when we say, therefore, my brothers and sisters, you say, therefore, call your name over here. Stand firm. Let nothing move. I will not let anything move me. Uh, and uh, I think when Pastor Moridi was here, he was saying, um, uh, what did he say? Senior moment on stage. Anyway, <laughs> uh, he was saying that uh, he said so many things. But anyway, it's the whole thing. He was saying, how do we take in the word? We take in the word by hearing, by meditating, by memorizing, by teaching others. You see, that's the way we take in the word. But I'm that kind of a person who I have doubt. And I always ask myself, so how do I know? that God is going to be with me? How do I know that I can take God at his word? And the Lord led me to understand something about covenants. And um, if you look at uh, Exodus 19, verses 19, uh, uh, verse, verse 10, chapter 19, verse 10, and the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today. Uh, the Israelites had just... Uh, uh, crossed over. I mean, they had just um, uh, been delivered uh, from Egypt, 
And, uh, you know, these were the first things that they were beginning to do. And so God tells them, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Uh, have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day. Because on that day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all people. And you realize after that in Exodus 20, that's when we read uh, the Ten Covenants, uh, the Ten Commandments. And what is happening there is that the Lord is in a covenant making process with these people. They have been slaves for 400 years. They have worshipped other gods. They have known the gods of Egypt. But God is saying, I want you to consecrate. I'm going to come down. I want to meet with you. And when he meets with them, he begins with Ten Commandments. And he's saying, I'm doing a new thing. I'm giving you these commandments because I want you to know me as, as your God. You have known other gods. You have known the way that they operate. But now I want to make a covenant with you uh, as your God. And I really want to thank God that we've had our 21 day of consecration. Amen? We really have. We really have. We've also experienced God, haven't we? We really have. We have experienced God in, in the, these uh, four days in just amazing ways. But, um, um, but I sense that God wanted us to take another step. He wanted us to take another step. And the step is covenant. And when we make a covenant with God, I always like to say it's like, um, you know, when you're dating, you're dating. See, there, we always say that when you're dating, it's like clothes in a shop. It's still hanging on in the shop. See, someone else can take it. See, we know of stories where people have come, there was even an engagement, and uh, the sister went. Yeah, it was just a friendship. But then when you take the extra step, it becomes a commitment. And when there's a commitment, there is more security in the relationship, isn't it? Yeah, which is why when uh, I always know that um, when, you're, when there's no commitment, there's a lot of insecurity. And I believe for us as believers, because of not understanding the whole thing of covenant, we live in insecurity. We live with doubt. We always wonder, will God be there for me? Will, will he hold me? Can I trust him? I'm making this uh, declaration in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 15, 58, where I say, I will be unshakable. By what basis will I be unshakable? What is it? And so you find here, covenant is raising your commitment to God, and God raising his commitment to you. That is what a covenant is. Uh, I know we... Um, we, we say, yes, we are saved, which is fine. It's the first step. But I, God takes us from glory to glory, doesn't he? And I think when it comes now to uh, uh, just growing in our faith, there's, the co there's a covenant. And here are some of the benefits of covenant. There is provision. Uh, Genesis uh, 22, verse 17 and 18. This is what he says. I will bless you. I will bless you. For those of us who hustle, God is saying, I will bless you. It is I will bless you. Okay? Um, the other, whatever, is uh, blessings and multiplication. Uh, the other benefit. And these were things uh, that, um, uh, these were promises that God was making to Abraham. And look at this verse. I will bless you and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Now, um, for us, we've been talking about multiplication, about discipleship, and about spiritual children, and even biological children. Biological children, amen? <laughs> for those of you who are trusting children, you can say, yes, the Lord has said, I will bless you and I will multiply you. And it is I, and it is a covenant promise. And it says over there, your descendants will take possession of the gates of your enemies. Let me not cheat you. This is the way I pray for my children. 
and I say, Lord, this is what you have said. They will take possession of the gates of their enemies. In other words, they will overcome. They will overcome all the, the issues of their generation. They will overcome. And that is a covenant promise. Then he also says protection. Uh, another uh, covenant um, promise is protection. And here's the thing. Oh, my goodness. Genesis 12, 13 says, I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. Now, let me give you an example. Let me tell you what happened. When we left here on Tuesday, we went home and arrived to some news that uh, a, a very valuable plot of land that we own, uh, there are people who were saying that they wanted to acquire it for some government project. And I just said to myself, hey, this does not sound like a blessing. It does not sound like a blessing in any way. And so I was able to say, Lord, I will, you have said, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And we were able to stand on that word because it is a covenant blessing. It is a covenant uh, blessing. Then it says over here, guidance and direction, and that is a Psalm uh, 32 uh, verse 8, and it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't God so amazing? He says, I, I will do it for you. You don't even have to, uh, you know how we talk about is an acceleration. It's because we are depending on some of these, on, on some of these promises. And then God will rebuke the devourer on your behalf. And that is Malachi 3, uh, 11. And this one is really talking about the tithe. We have truncated the verse, but it's from Malachi 3, 10, where it says, test me in this, where God says, bring in the whole tithe, that there might be food in my store or in my house, and test me in this. That's what God says. And then he says, I'll open the floodgates of heaven for you, and you'll have so much blessing that you cannot contain. But then he also says, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your field will not drop their fruit before it's ripe. In other words, if you're doing a business, it will not fail. Amen? That's what it means. And so I was like, how, if, if, if God has given us all these promises and making a covenant is the part of it, then I was like, I really would love for us to make this covenant together as a community. And this is what uh, Exodus 19, 5 to 8, this is like God's vision. He says, now therefore, if you'll indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, there are things over there, conditions, then it shall be a special treasure uh, to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you realize here that God's vision for the church, God's vision, because he has a vision, is that we are a people who are set apart. A people who are set apart. Um, and in First Peter it says, but you're not like that, for you're a chosen people. You're not living anymore like the world. You're not getting your likes or your identity from social media. I really loved that testimony. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people, God's own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So he calls us to be a set-apart people. Then, of course, he also calls us to be disciple-makers. We've been talking about that, and he's been calling us for global impact, where we call, uh, where we ask for nations. And so, um, uh, let me see here. Okay, so I want to connect this thought with a thought that we had when we were in, uh, in, in January, and it was a lesson that really caught my head, my mind, and it was spiritual battles cannot be won with physical weapons. And here, I think for believers, we have fought with physical weapons for way too long when we have not understood what it means to be in covenant with God. In other words, there are some battles we fight that we should not be fighting but that God himself has said he's going to fight for us. And so God invites us into a personal relationship with him. That much we know. 
In John 1.12, it says, But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. In other words, we've been adopted into the body of Christ. And then uh, in 2 Corinthians, it says, Therefore, if anyone is, is in Christ, the new creation has come. Behold, the old has gone. And here we're saying we we, we, we have, we, he's, he's giving us a new identity as children of God where we should reflect the character of God and pursue and extend our Father's interests. That is who God is calling us to be. That is what he's calling us to be. And I feel, and I'm strongly, I, I just sense that this was what God was telling us in this conference to enter into what we call an adoption process as his children an adoption process and because that is what covenant making is about um, and it is an adoption process where we're saying by the way today I have been adopted as a child of God amen today and and it's something when we're talking about a covenant it's something formal you know it's like a wedding it's something formal. And I think when you look at the Bible, you will see God making covenants in the history of Israel, you know, in, in many times. So when we say an adoption process, we are, we are adopted into a family, that is the church. We're adopted into the family and the church is the local expression of Christ. And we have even been sharing over here, why a family? Why are we talking that we're being adopted into a family? It's because family, there's inheritance, isn't there? There's inheritance. There's inheritance. Um, and then in a family, the spiritual power in a family. And I love the way we were led this morning. And uh, uh, I think it was Pastor who shared Isaiah 50 uh, verse 22. The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. And you see over here, he's not talking to one person. He's talking to a community. And this is God's vision and passion for us. But then when we talk about being in a family, there are also responsibilities of serving God, following instructions, tithing, and so on. So have I convinced you of the need to covenant with God? <laughs> that is what God calls us to do, to covenant with him. To covenant with him. And um, maybe I can share a personal story of how, this co how I applied this. Um, I remember telling my husband, this is a spooky story. It's one of the ones he says is a spooky story. Are you ready for my spooky story? <laughs> so, <laughs> I think on Monday, I told, I was, or Sunday, I told my husband, you know, I've been having a recurring dream in my life, not in my life, in the last few years, where I feel as if I was betrothed to something, to somebody, to an, a spiritual entity. Do you guys know spiritual spouses? You know about spiritual spouses? How many of us know about spiritual spouses? Oh, fantastic. I'm not the only spooky person around here. <laughs> and so, and then I told God, honestly, I do not know how to pray. I don't know what to do. I've tried binding. I've tried, I've tried everything. And I was like, Lord, what, how do I pray? And God told me, so you've made a covenant with me. Just raise that covenant. Let that covenant speak for you. In other words, you know when you say, Lord, I have made a covenant with you, it is greater than the covenant that was made for whatever that process was. And the thing left. The thing left. So you want God's covenant to speak on your behalf. You want to make that commitment to God. You want to raise your level of commitment so that he too raises his level of commitment to you. Now, I don't want you to think that you're not saved. You're saved. But see, we've understood that there's a relationship, boy-girl relationship. Is there a marriage? Not yet. But... Um, you're raising your commitment by entering into a covenant. So I'm going to ask us to stand. And um, with this, I, it was actually, I wasn't going, I was, it was actually, um, it was actually going to lead to the Holy, uh, to the communion, which I think I had requested Pastor Moridi to lead us through. So I'd really like for him to come because I'm also under his authority. <laughs> 
um, I was telling him the way God operates in our lives. Me, I go binding and casting and uh, expending a lot of energy. Him, he just comes and overrides. That headache that has been disturbing you, it is gone. Me, I'm like the headache, the torment, the what? And so, <laughs> him, he just overrides the whole process. And that's the way God has chosen to, to do this. Now, here's the thing. As I'm leading us through this prayer, I don't think it's for everyone. It's not for everyone. This is a prayer of drawing the line in the sand where you're saying, I'm committing to God. I'm raising my level of commitment to God. Now, the things that we have been talking about here at Mavuno family, we've been talking about uh, 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 serving here, being a disciple. We've been talking about tithing. There are many things that we've been talking about, and we've been saying we will do them. But this is a place now where of committing before God that you will do them. And so it's not a, it's not a, you do not take this lightly. You do not make this covenant lightly. We're going to be doing Holy Communion. Normally we serve it to everybody. Everyone takes it. But I want those who are saying, I want to go to the next level. There are for some of you who might say, I'm not ready for this. That's okay. You're still a believer and you'll make it to heaven. But with this one, we are saying, we're drawing the line. We are covenanting with God today. And we are covenanting to, we are first of all, so it's in two parts. The first part is where we are saying, by the way, me, my family of origin, that bloodline, it's best I leave it behind. It is best I get adopted by God. It is best I get adopted into his family. It is where we are saying, I'm moving myself from my bloodline into the body of Christ. I love the fact that there's somebody who said, I'm in the bloodline of Jesus. That's what we are saying. This bloodline, Maneno, it has been too much. Too much. It is best that I do what the Bible says and agree with the word, which is I have been adopted into the body of Christ. And guess what? The body of Christ is not up there in the air. The body of Christ is this family. It is this family. Because the body of Christ is the local expression of the church. And for us, it is here, Mavuno. So if you're not a member of Mavuno, you can covenant to your church. Um, and then here we are saying, we're going to renounce our family altars, our clan altars and receive cover under the altar that is here, which is Mavuno. You see, there's always an altar speaking. Um, there's always an altar speaking. And for us, God has given us the altar here. Remember, I gave the example of someone who God told them, you, you're a altar, you're a believer, it's a, you have a good altar. But the altar of Mavuno is a powerful altar. So why wouldn't I want to get my cover to receive my blessings, to receive my protection under the cover that God has provided. Does that make sense? Okay. And then, uh, and then of course, we will covenant after we have made those renunciations. And um, we will take the communion as a sign of our covenant with God. Remember, even when Jesus first broke the bread and, and was with his um, disciples, he said, take this, it's the, my new covenant with you. And yeah, it's my new covenant with you, so you're going to see it in a very different way. So you're going to repeat after me, and I want us to just pray with conviction, uh, even as you repeat these prayers, and I'm expecting a lot, personally. I'm expecting that... Um, Indeed, you will feel that new identity. That you're going to feel a shift. That some of the spiritual issues that have been bothering you, there's going to be a shift because you have changed your bloodline. That you're going to experience God like you have never experienced him before. That as you leave your bloodline, you shall receive healing. That gentleman who said, I have been tithing, 
and nothing has come out of it. That altar speaking against you is one of poverty and stagnation. But as you move and as you say, I have been adopted into the body of Christ, then those things are gone. The, the power is broken. You just need to say, go. You do the overrides that he does. You just say, spirit of poverty and stagnation, go in Jesus' name. You shall not be. You shall not. You shall not. Because you have changed your bloodline. And so, I, I, and so I'm going to lead us in these prayers. But I want you to just understand that it's a spiritual transaction. This is a holy moment. It's like that moment when God came down to Mount Sinai to meet his people because he was doing a new thing. This is what God is leading us to do right now. Amen. What an amazing father that he would do this for us. Yeah, so nice and strong with a lot of conviction. By the way, marriages will be healed. Once you shift, marriages change. Anyway, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That I did not choose you. That I did not choose you. But you chose me to be adopted into your family. That you chose me to be adopted into your family. I disconnect myself. I disconnect myself. From my family bloodline. From my family bloodline. And receive my adoption. And receive my adoption. As your child. As, as your child. child. As expressed through the body of Christ here at Mavuno. As expressed through the body of Christ here at Mavuno. This one, put your strength into it. Okay? You're renouncing. You're renouncing those evil bloodlines. I renounce my family altars. I renounce my family altars. I renounce the clan altars. I renounce the clan altars. I renounce the tribal altars. I renounce the tribal altars. That have been speaking against me. That have been speaking against me. And receive coverage under the altar. And receive coverage under the altar. You have established here at Mabuno Church. You have established. Church. I will receive my blessings here. I will receive my blessings here. I will receive my instructions here. I will receive my instructions. Here. I will receive my inheritance here. I will receive my inheritance here. And my purpose and destiny. And my purpose and destiny. From this altar. From this altar. As I follow you. As I follow you. I covenant with you today. I covenant with you today. That I I am your child. I am your child. And you are my father. And you are my father. And the communion I am taking. And the communion I am taking. Is a sign of this covenant. Is a sign of this covenant. That I'm making today with you. I am making today with you. And my spiritual family. And my spiritual family. Mavuno Church. Mavuno Church. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. you now speak speak to those spirits that have been disturbing you speak and say marriage destroyer be gone if it is an illness be gone if it is a wayward child align them align them to God's promises come on just speak to the problem if it is that stagnation and poverty it is gone in the mighty name of Jesus because we have covenanted with a higher covenant that mental disease mental condition is gone in the mighty name of Jesus hey 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 I bless you God I bless you God I bless you Jehovah God I bless you, Jehovah God. 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 I would like to, I would like us to make these declarations. I want us to go back to the slide. I don't know what slide. It's number 11, I think. Oh, what slide number is that? Uh, oh gosh, it was 11. Anyway, uh, no, oh dear, can I see? Fantastic.
fantastic. Slide number 11. And here's what I want us to do. I want us to recognize. I want us to recognize and to speak to ourselves. And to recognize that there's a transaction that has happened. When the Bible says, if anyone is in is, if is in Christ, they are a new creation. Behold, the old has gone and the new has come. That is what we are declaring. And what we are saying is that from today, God, you are my provider. God, you are my provider. You are the one who will bless me and multiply me. You are the one who will bless me and multiply me. You are the one who will protect me. You are the one who will protect me. You are the one who will guide and direct me. You are the one who will guide and direct me. You are the one who will rebuke the devourer on my behalf. You are the one who will rebuke the devourer on my behalf. As I type. As I type. Hey, come on, just celebrate God. Just yes. thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. I continue. Okay, thank God. And just thank God. I, I just spent a few, just a few minutes, if that's okay. Just just spend a few minutes. Just tell you, thank you, God. You're my provider. I shall not want this here. Oh, I shall stand firm. Thank you that my blessings come from you. Thank you. My multiplication is in you. My protection is in you. Guidance and direction. God will rebuke. You will rebuke the devourer. Behold, I am a new creation. I am a new creation. Behold, you're my healer. You're my provider. Oh, come on, come on. I'm a new creation. I have moved over from darkness into light. I have been adopted into the body of Christ. I have been adopted into the body of Christ. I have been adopted into the body of Christ. Oh, I am a new creation. Behold, the old has gone and the new has come. In Jesus' name. We learned about the reproach of Egypt being rolled away. When God's people covenanted with him, God said the reproach of Egypt today has been rolled away from you. This gathering, I believe that the reproach of Egypt has been rolled away from God's people. Some of us evil foundations have been speaking over our lives. By the way, the blood of Jesus is more powerful than anything that is facing you. There's no voice that will speak against you when the voice of Jesus has spoken. When Pastor Carol has led us to understand is that Christ has called us to honor him by committing to him and committing to his body. And that when we commit in that way, I mean, when we have Holy Communion, what is communion? Communion means together. It is one. It is body. We become the body of Christ. And we remove ourselves from evil foundations. And we connect ourselves to the holy foundation that is Jesus. That's what we've been doing. And we're saying that there is power to break every chain. Every voice that has spoken from our past. Everything that has spoken against us to pull us down. 
There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Listen, this is not magic. We're not making incantations and spells. We are actually standing on the word of God, which is the truth. The word of God is the truth. And let me tell you this, somebody. Some of you have just joined this family. You have a disadvantage because the person sitting next to you knows some things you don't know. Because they have been in this family for a while. Let me say something. There's somebody who says, I've not tithed, or rather, I've tithed, and I've not seen God come through. I don't know if you're here for the gathering when I talked about the fact that tithe opens floodgates. It opens floodgates. But there's something else God expects you to do. So I want to challenge you for those of you who are joining the family, and even those of you who are in the family, go through all the content of this gathering over the next few weeks. And then after that, go on my podcast or go on the Mavuno Church website. Look for messages that address the issue you're facing. Some of it's a financial issue. We can't preach everything we've ever preached in Mavuno in one gathering. But the information is there. You just have to replace Netflix or replace whatever it is in the, in, in the evening that you listen to. And start to wash your, mind with the, wash your mind with the word of God. And watch God begin to realign your life. Change your mind, your thinking. Because that's what God wants to do. But what I want to tell you is this. Right now, as you are connected to the bloodline of Jesus, no other voice will speak into your life. Let me tell you this. Somebody had asked the question, what about sin? The only way the devil can have a voice into your life is if you allow him. And of course, sin is me allowing the devil a legal foothold into my life. I must also live a holy life, isn't it? Because I don't want the devil to have a part of me. So when I say God will bless you, and then you live in sin, and then you're saying God is not blessing me, you need to ask yourself, have I examined my life to ensure I'm living according to the covenant that I made? But God is faithful. And my belief and my full trust is because of this covenant we make with him, that the Lord is on your side, that there's no voice that can speak against you, because if, on, if the Lord is on your side, who can be against you? And so I want us to sing with authority now, one last time before we, we have communion. Our communion is our sealing, our public way of sealing the covenant we, have made, we make with Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every. Break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. So 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 so. Listen to somebody. There's some of you come to church with a past. Some of you, you know where you came from. You're here because you're saved by grace. Somebody asked in one of the questions, how come the pastor is talking about being, people being born again from birth? I need you to understand, in Mavuno we sometimes make jokes. It can be confusing when you're new. Sometimes the pastor also cracks jokes from the pulpit. No, nobody is born saved. That was just a joke. It was just implying some people came from families where their parents were righteous and taught them righteous ways. You still have to make your own decision. Yeah, you can't be born saved. But there are some of us who are so far from that that we know where we came from. I want you to visualize how far God has brought you for you to be here. It's a miracle for you to be in the house of God. And then I want you to visualize that ball of your life going forward is going to be so fruitful because now you know how to be fruitful for, for the kingdom. And you know what heavenly rewards are all about. And I want you to visualize that the little dot of your life is going to give birth to a whole string of eternity. Where you will be clothed with jewels. And you will worship the Lord your God. And you will cast the many crowns. Because you're a ten minute servant at his feet. And you will show him so much love. Because you'll have things to worship him with. And that your life will be fruitful. You will be a righteous man. You will live an inheritance for your children's children. A spiritual inheritance. A financial inheritance 
every inheritance in Jesus' name. As we sing this song, I want you to visualize those things and sing it by faith. There is power. There is power in action some of us we've been marching around some walls we've been wondering how we're going to take those walls down we're facing impossible situations in the last 21 days you have dedicated yourself you, you 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 put yourself aside to wait on God and to trust him I want to pronounce that this year will be a year of miracles because your victory has already been won but I want us to do a prophetic action I want us to just a few times, I want us to just march around where you are. Just march around. Just march around. Just march around that wall. Visualize those situations. Come on, just sing it as you walk around your situation right now. Visualize. I see the chains falling. I hear the chains falling, somebody. I hear the chains falling. My financial situation, I'm walking around it right now. My family situation, my children, all the things I'm trusting God for. I see the chains falling. Now what I want us to do, now what I want us to do, I want us to give a shout, a shout of victory. All right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, I'm going to count. And I'm going to count to seven to visualize the seven times we march around Jericho. Number one, these walls are going to come falling down. Number two, God is on the throne of your life. Number three, you are loved more than anyone else in the world. Number four, Jehovah Jireh is your provider. Number five, no weapon are formed against you shall prosper. Number six, you are a ten minor servant of the Most High God. And when I say number seven, we are going to make a noise until all the witch doctors in this place will feel the power of God. Number seven, God is your Father. Jesus. Woo! Hey! Worship you, Jesus. Praise you, God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. Woo! Woo! Wow. My Father, I want to thank you. We worship you. Never has there been a shout like that in this compound. That is a shout of victory. And Father, we are saying every incantation, every witchcraft against us is broken. We are saying that, Father God, you are on the throne of our lives. And I am declaring a season of miracles upon your people in Jesus' name. I'm declaring that those who have had their eyes hurting, that the, the Lord is healing you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That sensitivity to light, it's gone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bless you, Lord. Hey, I declare that there's someone right now, you've been trusting God for healing. Just put your hand on that part. Father, I want to thank you right now that in the name of Jesus, your power is in this house. We have expectation and belief. We know you're here. Lord, we don't even have to do anything powerful, anything extra, because Lord, you are the God of healing. I am declaring right now healing in Jesus' name upon your children. 
and I'm declaring that Lord according to our faith because our faith is together right now according to our faith it is done in Jesus name and I declare Lord that there will be testimony upon testimony upon testimony this coming week at 4 30 prayer that Lord Jesus people will testify of mysterious illnesses that they had never let anyone even know about things that have been happening that nobody even knew that Lord in Jesus name you are healing them right now you're healing them right now yeah there's someone who's had blood in your stool and the Lord is saying I'm clearing that right now yeah some of, that person even feared they were, they were getting cancer and I'm telling you right now God has cleared that out of your body in Jesus name it's gone it's gone in Jesus name bless the Lord bless the Lord he's such a good God by the way he knows he knows us better than we know ourselves yeah he does and this is going to be an amazing year for us in God's presence it's going to be an amazing year in God's presence now this is a mountaintop experience and in a mountaintop experience you sometimes wonder how sustainable is this will I go and on Monday when I get to the office I already all the psych I had has gone when the reality rears its ugly head and I want to tell you no it doesn't have to be that way there's a few things that will maintain this for you as you go down the mountain number one hey 430 prayers guys yeah let's let's make those prayer times a fuel for us don't miss 430 prayers don't even be those guys who come three times a week the devil never takes a day off yeah even on Saturday and Sunday pray by yourself yeah he doesn't take a day off you should never take a day off number two read God's Word read God's Word God's Word will give you the fuel to keep going as you as you face and confront whatever challenges are in your life make sure that you maintain your habit of not not don't lose the habit of meeting together yeah going to church is important going to discipleship group is important those things will keep you anchored by the way you might say you're shy let me tell you this there are sometimes you need to speak to the devil and tell you get thee behind me Satan yeah how can shyness what is that I told you what my wife tells our shy children tells them wake up listen to worship music and then come and smile at everyone and greet them you, you take charge of your situation you don't let anything determine and tell you who told you you're shy who told you yeah, who told you yeah how do you know you're shy how do you know you're not answering me how did you know whoever told who is it to you yeah there's some things we listen to that are not of us and we need to be able to say no no the Bible says I am I am loved the Bible says I am fearless it says the spirit in me is not a spirit of fear that means I'm fearless it's power that's my spirit so if I'm feeling that I'm fearful I need to say that's not my spirit that is something else that has come an alien spirit I need to speak to it and tell it ah, social anxiety I bind you in Jesus name yeah and and learn where is where is uh where is uh where is Joe Kobudi Pastor Joe Kobudi there he is let me tell you something about Pastor Joe Pastor Joe was an intense melancholic and when he became my assistant he told me Pastor M I see that you are able to connect with people I want to learn from you and he came and stood by me when I greet people in church by the way no males like to do that melancholics will be like I, I don't like I feel socially anxious when people smile at me he said no 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 this man has something that I need and I don't have it so he would come and stand next to me on Sundays and then he would watch me greeting people and then one day he broke it down he said Pastor M I finally cracked it I said what have you cracked this is how you greet people he said the first thing you see when you see somebody from 10 meters away you start smiling from far that means that person cannot ignore you because you're smiling for 10 meters and then he says as they're coming close to you you put your leg forward and you put your hand like this by the way I'd never been analyzed like that I felt a bit creeped out eh? and then he said and then you just come with all your body like hi welcome to church and he said I finally figured this thing out so he actually broke it down to the motions and he began to do it and he said wow it works it works hey listen you can have control over your situation yeah when the devil tells you I'm too shy to be in a discipleship group bind him and cast him out of your life and go and learn from somebody else how do you talk to people you don't know because God doesn't want you stuck where the devil wants you so this is how you maintain this is how you maintain the last thing listen to the Word of God over and over listen take take the podcast take the podcast I've got a whole podcast with messages from all the gatherings make a commitment this year you will listen to all the Mavuno messages they are all on that podcast by the way 
Yeah, listen to one every day or two days. And just wash your mind with a new thinking. And I promise you, God will see you through this year. I promise you, God will see you through this year. Listen, some things you're not seeing them yet physically, but they will manifest as you start to see them in the spirit. See your marriage healed. See your finances healed. See your body healed. Begin to operate by faith that those things are healed. Start to work like somebody who is healed and watch God begin to do what only he can do. And so I want us to have communion. I'm going to ask my pastors. Are we on the sides? So all the campus pastors, if I could have, is it half there, half here? All right. On the sides. Oh, you'll see it. There's a table over there on the side. There's another table over there. So can I have campus pastors really quickly making their way there? And you, you don't have to go to your campus pastor. We're going to go to any pastor. As we come to the time of communion, I really believe, by the way, that Holy Communion is how we experience God. It's one of the physical, tangible ways He's allowed us to experience Him. Jesus, Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians 11, 23. He said, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. Can you see that discipleship already? Paul is saying, Jesus taught me, now I'm teaching you. And he said, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. It's amazing that Jesus did not take cake he didn't take something that was not available. He took the most available thing in the culture, the most available food, the most common food. He took bread. And he wanted to, this, his death to be accessible to everybody in the culture. And so we're saying Jesus is not exclusive. He's for everyone. Everyone. This feast is for everyone. The invite is to everyone. He took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus is giving his body to be broken for us. He's about to be crucified. And he says, this bread symbolizes my body. But then also, you need to understand that in the scriptures, the body of Christ is the church. And so every time we remember Jesus and we remember the body of Christ, we also remember that we are now the body of Christ. So this communion is not just a, a vertical communion, it's a horizontal communion as well. It's not just me and Jesus, it's us as a family and Jesus. And in the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And then he said, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I want us to just... Um, in a very orderly fashion. We're going to make pastors, if you could just spread out. They've spread out all along that side, so you don't have to come to the front. There are others who are spread out all along the dome that side. If there are enough of you, you can even have some at the back. Just spread out as much as you can uh, so that we're not close next to each other. So walk to the pastor closest to you. Just receive the covenant. And as you receive it, the pastors will just say the words over you, the body of Christ that was broken for you, the blood of Christ that was given for you. That's all. And then you'll come back to your seat. So just go back, go to the pastors, receive this sign of the covenant. Just make your way there uh, slowly. We just go in an orderly fashion.
just say if you're online and you're able to get some elements with you, any bread or wine or juice, water, whatever it is that's accessible, uh, feel free to join us. If you're not able to get it right away because of where you are, you can still do it in retrospect because God is not, is not bound by time. And so we'll be happy to have you do it as part of this covenant, committing with us, the rest of this body, in the commitment that we are making. Uh, as we drink, I want to just, uh, before something I forgot to do, I want to give a shout out to the students of Isili High School who are here. Bless God for you. We've got a whole, a whole congregation of people from Isili. And then we've also got Mwangaza Secondary School, Masi Girls School. They're here as well. We actually have Mavuno Mwangaza in that school. And so many of these girls are actually members of Mavuno in their school, which meets in their school. And I just want to give a shout out. I don't want you to feel like you are forgotten. You are part of this family. We love you so much. Now listen, this Paul, if you ever read that on your time, 1 Corinthians 11, he actually says very interesting things. And sometimes I think we don't understand them. He says something about whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Um, and sometimes people feel, oh, I don't feel like I'm okay because I came to church and I know what I did. Well, the Bible also says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. For you to deny yourself communion because you feel you're not worthy means that there are sometimes you feel you're worthy. My friend, you are never worthy. It is confession and repentance that makes you worthy. And so if you ever disqualify yourself because of that, you're wrong. The only thing that re requires you to take the body you're required is to know Jesus, to ask him to be your Lord and Savior. That's all you need to do. And then you take his blood and body because you're now a child of God. And if you know that you're out of order with him, then you whisper that prayer of confession and say, God, forgive me because I'm a sinner. But thank you for your promise of forgiveness. Yeah. It also says those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. What does that mean? You know, one of the things that the Corinthians were doing is that they were acting very selfishly when it came to communion. Some people were bringing, because communion was actually a meal. Some people would bring themselves Serena food, uh, posh food, and other people would come with their little chips. And then they wouldn't share because they felt we are more important than you. That's how you fail to discern the body of Christ. When you think you're more important than others, when you fail to love your neighbors, when you don't understand that Christ died for all of us and at the, at the foot of the cross, we are all equal. This is your brother and this is your sister. And that's what we've just done in our communion today. We've made covenant and we've said, God, we are covenanting with you and with your body. And so that's one of the things I just want to, throw, to, to bring that out. And he says, that is why many of you are weak and sick and a number have fallen asleep. That actually Christ is jealous about his body. He wants us to value being part of the body of Christ. Nevertheless, we are judged, when we are judged this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned in the world. Hey, God is a God of discipline and discipline is a form of love. So even when God disciplines you, he does it out of love. So communion should never be used to threaten you. It was an act of love. Jesus died because God so loved the world. Amen. And so this is actually, the we're celebrating the most important thing that we could ever celebrate. We're celebrating that after that ball, comes the rope and we're celebrating that our eternal destination is already secure and we're celebrating that God has given us the responsibility and the joy of earning eternal compensation and ensuring that we serve him with all our hearts and soul and mind and strength while we're here we're celebrating the biggest thing it's bigger than a business deal it's bigger than a nice car it's bigger than a comfortable house it's the most important thing that we're celebrating so I want us to now together as the body of Christ uh, open. Now, some of you, this is going to be a bit technical. You need the call signs to open this Mavuno things. So, the first one is the bread. It's at the top. It has its own flap. Once you open that one, then you now open the lower one. This is where it gets complicated, but it's doable. Trust me. And if you're struggling, there's no shame. We're the body. You can ask your neighbor. <laughs> neighbor, help me, please. What is the cosine coefficient? of this communion. Amen. And by the way, that was a joke. <laughs> hey, this new Magunites. All right. Uh, it's complicated. <laughs> All right. Hey, 
as we eat, we are celebrating the most amazing <laughs> gift that was given to us. That we are loved, greatly, greatly loved. And as you eat this, I want you to just experience the love of the Father who loves you. Come on, let's eat together. And then let's drink the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. This is symbolized by this that we drink. And so, Father, I want to thank you for every single one of us. Lord, you talked about the fact that there are those who did not regard the body of Christ and because of that they were falling ill and even dying. But I thank you that, Lord, there are peop the people in this house are not like that. That, Lord, we do regard correctly the body of Christ. That we're in covenant with each other. That we love one another as a family. That we are part of your body. And because of that, Lord, is it possible, Lord, that I could ask the opposite could be true? That where those who are getting sick, these ones would be healed just by the act of that, taking that communion. That Father God, even now there would be miracles of healing because of that communion we've taken. And that Lord, where there was death happening, that there will be life in these ones. Amen. Bless the Lord. There will be life in the house of God. Hey, don't get distracted. Let those who are close deal with that. But there's life in the house of God. There's blessing in the house of God. There's salvation in the house of God. Bless the Lord. Come on, somebody just say thank you, Lord. I receive your healing. Hey, bloodlines are being planted. Planted into the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Right now, as we speak, the power of God is here, by the way. <laughs> Some of you are even beginning to feel signs of healing. Things are changing. You know, the power of God is just falling upon you right now. Some of you are beginning to feel it. Some of you are just feeling a trembling right now. The Father is, the Father is working right now. He's working right now. Come on, just thank him. Just say thank you for your love. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you're healing your children. Even online, you're healing your sons and your daughters. Because you're perfect, Lord. You're so good, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hey, Father, right now I also ask that the joy of the, the, the Lord will be the strength of your people. I pray, Lord, right now for a spirit of joy to fall upon your children. Father God, would you not allow joy? Now, just allow joy to fall upon your children. There's someone who's been depressed. There's someone who's been feeling just so low. I speak over you a lightness, a lightness, a lightness in Jesus' name. Just, just allow me to worship him just one second. I want to just, I want to, I just sense that the Lord wants to bring joy to someone's life. And I don't want you to miss this. That I speak right now joy upon you. You who has been in depression. You who has been depressed as you've thought about your circumstance. You who all you have seen is your circumstance. I declare over you a lightness of spirit. In the name of Jesus. I declare over you a lightness of spirit. I call down Father right now from heaven a lightness of spirit upon your children. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The seriousness of the Lord is not your strength. It is His joy that is your strength. I say the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. I say joy is your strength right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I declare that joy in your situation right now. Amen. Even the serious situations of your life, I speak joy right now. I speak joy into your marriage for those who are married. I speak joy into your career. I speak joy into your service of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Father, thank you right now because I sense there's someone who's been delivered. A spirit of rejection is being delivered right now. Uh, Father God, there's someone who's been a spirit of depression right now. I bind you and I cast you out of this place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Leave. Leave your child. Bless you, Lord. Thank you for joy. Joy, 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 joy. Somebody just begin to receive the joy of the Lord right now. Joy. Joy is my portion. Is anyone experiencing the joy of the Lord? Joy is your portion. Joy is your portion. Joy is your portion. Thank you, Lord. And Father God, I just pray right now that there will be such a freedom as people leave your house. Someone who has been so anxious and uptight. Ah, uptightness is not your portion in Jesus' name. Someone who has even been losing sleep because of anxiety. It's not your portion in Jesus' name. Ah, anxiety, depart from God's people right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Father God, this I just feel so strongly in my heart, Lord, that joy is required by your children. It is their portion. I declare over you, 2024 is your year of joy in Jesus' name. The years the locusts have stolen, all those things, the Lord is restoring to somebody right now. And his joy is your strength. His joy is your strength. His joy is your strength. Some of you, you feel like the devil has stolen some things from you. Yeah. I, I want to stand on God's promise right now and say God is not a debtor to any man. And the Father will restore. What the canker worm and the locust stole from you, the Father is restoring it right now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I don't know why, I just sense a title deed. I sense there's someone who's just in that land transaction where people have taken advantage. And I speak over you the release of that title deed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Release it. It's been released from the vaults of heaven. They cannot stop it. It's done in Jesus' name. That transaction is done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And so, Father, we just want to thank you. We want to honor you. We want to bless you. We are loved, we are blessed, and we rejoice. Can I ask all the husbands and wives standing next to each other to hold hands? It's okay. If yours is not here, it's okay. Don't worry. In the spirit, the Lord... Actually, hold hands with Jesus if your spouse is not next to you. You just hold hands. Yeah, he's your spouse. Shikilia Yesu. Amen. 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 Father God, I want to speak over these, these ones. And I just speak over their bond. That Father God, whatever the enemy intended to steal, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I declare that Father God, they will be an example, an example, an example to this society that marriage with Jesus works. And I declare over any who have been troubled, maybe even any, somebody in this house who has thought of divorce because you felt God cannot help you. I declare in Jesus' name, there will be reconciliation in this house in Jesus' name. In fact, I declare that there will be among you those who will even choose to renew your vows. Yeah, you know what the enemy has tried to do to your marriage. And I declare that this year, you will actually come to your pastor and say, Pastor, we want to do a special small ceremony just to renew our vows to one another because we can see what the Lord has done for us. By the way, it's going to happen. It's going to happen in your campuses. And you will testify. The devil thought he had us. Oh my goodness. Now we know what he was afraid of in this marriage. Yeah, now we know what he was afraid of. Now we can see why he was fighting us so strongly. Because of the power of God that is going to be released when we are one. And so I bless you, God, for these ones. And even the ones whose spouses are not in the room, but they're trusting by faith that this blessing is theirs as well. We thank you, Lord, that you're faithful, you're able to do this. And that, Lord Jesus, these ones will be examples. They will be examples, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Hey. It's so good. It's so good. By the way, in, in, in March, in March we have the door fest. And it's happening March what? March 1st and 2nd. So just keep the eyes on, out on that calendar. I suspect this year it's going to be, we're going to have maybe three times the number we had last year. So make sure you book early when you hear about it in your campus. I want to pray for, you know, by the way, some of you say, somebody said, I put up my hand every time Pastor M asked me to put up my hand for a spouse. Until I was wondering, how many times did she say she put up? Every gathering. Every gathering. Ah, yeah. We believe, as we believe, the Lord hears. We believe that we just keep praying for you. Put up your hand if you're trusting God for a godly spouse. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Wow. Yeah, put up your hand. Wait, wait. Amen. Amen. Father Jesus, we want to thank you. Holy Spirit, we want to thank you. I want to thank you for everyone whose hand is raised. I thank you that these are your servants, servants of the Most High God. And so the first thing I'm praying for them, Lord, is that you will give them a spouse who will value their ministry. Give them a spouse who will understand what it is they are called to and will be a helpmate to them. I pray that, Lord Jesus, you would give them a spouse that they will just, they will not even believe. That is their hidden treasure, Lord. I speak hidden treasures for them. And I pray that Father God, here, here's something God is saying to me right now. Some of you have put criteria on those spouses that are not God's criteria. 
There's no verse that talks about tall, dark, and handsome. Listen, I, I really sense, this might sound like I'm joking, but it's not a joke. I really sense that some of you, the reason you're not finding the person is because you've put criteria that the Holy Spirit has not given to you. And the two criteria that God wants you to have is that you have the same master and the same love. The master is Jesus Christ. That, is this person ruled by Jesus? Do they have eternal life like I do? And the second one is, are they focused on serving God? Do they love God and do they love ministry? With those two criteria, Father, I declare over your children that this is a year of weddings in Mavuno Church. Thank you, Lord. I declare that pastors will get tired this year doing weddings. In fact, I declare that, Father God, we will have to even appoint more pastors to do weddings because we'll be overwhelmed by the number of weddings in this movement. Yeah. And I declare that by February 2025 gathering, that many here will testify. We'll not even have time for all of you to testify that the Lord has heard this prayer. That the Lord has heard this prayer. And so, Father, I just speak over your children. I speak over your children because there was an amazing lady who shared her testimony in this gathering. And she said, when I finally surrendered to the Lord, the Lord gave me what I'd been praying for. And I pray that you would lead these sons and daughters into surrender. It will not be their agenda. Because, Lord, it will be your agenda. You will give them the person you have for them. And that, Lord Jesus, you would bless them greatly in that thing. And so we honor you, Jesus. We honor you and we bless you and we can't wait. As pastors, we can't wait to do those weddings. We can't wait. We bless you. And if you're a pastor and your hand is up, even for you, I can't wait to do your wedding. Yeah. Because me, I only do weddings of pastors, by the way. So I can't wait to do your wedding. Pastor Rahab, I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. I will do it. I'll do it. And so, Father, we just want to honor you and bless you. We thank you for this family. Lord, I also pray that in our churches we will love one another. I pray that it will be true like it was in the book of Acts, that there was no needy one among us. That, Father, we will provide job opportunities for each other. Lord, we will employ one another in our campuses, Lord. We will provide business opportunities. Yeah. Yes. And that, Lord Jesus, there will be wealth in the house of God. Yeah. I pray that, Lord, there will be such a tangible love in every Mavuno campus that people will walk in and that's the first thing they will see. That's the first thing they will experience, the love of God among these people. And so, Lord, we just want to honor you and to bless you. I want to invite Pastor James to come up on stage. Let's appreciate Pastor James. And I'm going to hand over to him to make the final... Uh, announcements but I want to before he does can I ask my sweetie here to just speak speak a mother's blessing as the Lord leads you just a quick uh, prayer over God's people by the way today I'm not doing the same anointing and whatever we always do because I believe the Holy Spirit has already gone before me and many of the things we normally pray for have already been done just by being in God's presence in this place and so please speak a blessing sweetie. I think we'll make declarations our theme verse. Amen. Amen. So this is what we are declaring as a family. 2024 is an unshakable year. Yes, Lord. It is a year when we shall have resilient faith. Amen. When we shall, when our business will be God's business. Amen. And when we shall experience hidden treasures. Amen. As we serve you, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we bless just, you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. I love this month because it is the beginning of the year and we can say, Welcome 2024. Yeah. We are ready. Welcome 2024. We are ready. Amen. We'll be unshakable. It's my year. Amen. Pastor James. Good evening. Can we celebrate our, our spiritual father, our spiritual mother? Uh, I want us to speak a blessing over them. Is that okay? Let me invite you to stretch out your hands upon them and just command a blessing upon them. 
God is using them to lead us into resilient faith. Pray that God will take them to heights of faith that they have never been to before. That God will give them the grace to trust him this year for what has been before impossibility in Jesus' name. That they will testify, praise be to the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. Our God and our King, every blessing that, that Pastor M and Pastor Carol are calling upon us, we pray that you will cause it to descend upon their lives a hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our God and our King, we thank you for this year, for the invitation that they are making to us, uh, that you're making to us through them. We thank you for the invitation to put kingdom business at the center of our lives. We thank you because we see it demonstrated in their lives. We pray that this year, Holy Spirit of God, you will give them the grace uh, to put their hand to the plow, to even sacrifice more than they have done before as you're inviting us into this season. We thank you, Jehovah, King of glory, for hidden treasures that you have in store for every member of this community. As you have used Pastor M, as you have used Pastor Carol to unlock hidden treasures in our own lives today. And over the last three days, oh God, up until today, we declare over their lives that you are unlocking hidden treasures. We thank you for every testimony. We know that they have testified of your goodness before. They have said that sometimes you have blessed them so much, it has been embarrassing for them to testify. Our God and our King, may testimonies abound in 2024. May you do even more and greater things than what you have done for them in 2023. May you continue to accelerate them. May you establish them in every grace that you have given them that, that is available for us as a family. Everything that you desire us to inherit, we thank you for global impact. May it go to a new level in 2024. We thank you for wealth without sorrow. We declare acceleration in Jesus' name. We speak over their own marriage. We thank you for a phenomenal celebration of 30 years in marriage. Our Father and our God, as they have gone ahead of us, we declare that it is our portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and we honor them and we celebrate them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We speak a blessing over their children. We command a blessing over their daughters. We command a blessing over their son. We declare that it shall be well with them. We uphold them before you in prayer. Come on, just uh, raise a prayer of protection over them that no attack of the enemy will prevail on account of the ministry that they have done today. Our God and our King, we raise a hedge of fire around our father and our mother. We command a blessing upon them. We declare over you, even as Pastor Caro has taught us about covenant, your covenant promises in Psalm 91. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you and no plague shall come near your dwelling. We declare that this is your portion. We declare that this is the portion of your family. That a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at, right, at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Because Jehovah, the King of glory, the mighty warrior, is waging war on your behalf. Our God and our King, we command every blessing upon our father and our mother. We thank you for their diligence. We thank you for their faithfulness. We thank you for their sacrifices. We thank you because your word will be established in their lives, even as it is being established in our lives today, that always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. We declare that this is their portion, and we declare that they are blessed in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said,